officers and the mercenaries who explode them. It almost brings a tear to your eye. You hold back because you don't. Oh, Black Rambo, pretty big fan of yours. You go say hi to her. Yay. Okay, we need to stop not saying anything. Just listen to this. Oh, man, it's the Vault Hunter. You are awesome. Didn't you fight Terramorphus? I fought a big creature like that once. He was a big whale squid with a hundred tentacles. You ever thought anything with tentacles? Oh, yes, you have. Terramorphus had tentacles. How silly of me. Now, where was I? I am so sorry. All right, the whale creature. His name was Blow All the Apocalypse. I called him the Apocalypse for short. And he attacked my hometown of Tsunami Dead when I was but a little girl. <laughs> You ever been to Tsunami's Edge? Great town, nice beaches, great food, and the cost of living is just so low. Even being a single grandmother and working part-time in a scag meat processing factory, I was still able to provide for little Mr. Torg. We may not have been able to afford the finer things in life, like food, but we got by. After all, Mr. Torg and I didn't have anything but one another after that horrible gas leak blew up the Iridium mine. Sounds like that lady out of Orange is the New Black. explosions themselves in an effort to avenge his fallen parents and... Ah oh man, I forgot what I was talking about. Where was... All oh, right, the blowhole, the apocalypse. <laughs> so anyway, I was wrestling blowhole to the ground and I have my bicep curled around his blueberry throat. Blueberry? Sorry, I meant to say blubbery. I've got blueberries on the brain, I guess. I grow them in my backyard. Mr. Torg helped me plant them. Thanks again for that, grandson. I love you, Grandma! <laughs> anyway, I have my bicep around his blubbery throat, and Mr. Torg starts crying because he really likes whale squids, and he doesn't want to see me hurt one. They are the princes of the ocean! So I let the whale go after giving it a punch in the eyeball so he'll remember me, and it swam away into the ocean. And then I had Mr. Torg drive me to the ice cream parlor. He got me Rocky Road, because Rocky Road's my favorite. I'm extremely partial to the way the marshmallows act like little landmines of flavor amidst the battleground of chocolate. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Is it pistachio? I bet it's pistachio. Oh, that reminds me! You'll never guess who I saw today! Pistachio the Amazing! Oh, he's a magician who studied under Crazy Earl, so he's got that weird mustache, you know, but I saw him this. make a rack hive disappear! A whole rack hive! I said to Mr. Torg, I said, Mr. Torg, wasn't that amazing? And he said, yes, it was, Grandma. Didn't you say that, High Five? You remember saying that? I remember, Grandma! And we stood in line afterward and got his autograph, and I thought I had it somewhere around here, but it's probably in the attic. I really ought to go up there and clean it out one of these days. I have so many little keepsakes up there. Are you... You're paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. Say, what's my favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, boy. You're still sure? Oh, so you are listening. How wonderful. You're an <laughs> even better listener than my old Bill pet did rack, that. Bisto. Bisto was such a sweetie. You ever had a pet rack? If you can tame them, they are the sweetest pet you'll ever have. He used to just sit on my shoulder and bite chunks of flesh out of my neck to pass the time. I still remember the way he used to tweet. He went, tweet, tweet. <laughs> it was so cute. I had a conversation with him once. I said, Mr. Beast, though, he liked being called Mr. Beast, though. It made him feel like an aristocrat. I said, Mr. Beast, though, you're looking very cute today. And he said, Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Or he tweeted in a way that made me know that's how he felt. And then he lowered his little head like he was taking a bow. It was adorable. Beastel was my third pet rack. First, I had Woody. He got hit by a train. Then I had Anita. She got shot up trying to take vengeance on the train that killed Woody. And then I found Beastel making little poops on the windmill outside our house. After Mr. Torg and I wrestled her to the ground, I did a flying pile driver off a nearby tower tree. Got him straight in the spine and brought him down. <laughs> we brought him in and fed him some skag steaks until he decided he loved us. I still miss Beasto sometimes. He just died of old age. Rack don't live much longer than a few years, but I treasured the time we had together. Oh, poor Mr. Torg. When Beasto died, he cried for a week. The kids made fun of him at school, but I told him not to pay them any mind. Be in touch with your emotions! It's not a character flaw! That's right, High Five. Is something wrong? You look confused, Vault Hunter. 
Oh, you probably haven't heard anyone call Mr. Torg High Five before. The world may know him as Mr. Torg, but the Flexingtons always refer to him using his middle Hi, Shake and Baker. It's a Flexington family tradition, after all, to use your grandfather or grandmother's name as your own middle name. And my husband, High Five Flexington, God rest his soul, was the best grandfather Mr. Torg could have asked for before he passed. He taught Mr. Torg dang near everything he knew about firearms. Without High Five's teachings, I don't think the Torg Corporation would exist at all. Gosh, I still remember the first gun Mr. Torg tried to make after his parents died. A Jacob shotgun with a stick of dynamite attached to the barrel. Torg nearly blew his face off, got up, dusted his mustache off, and swore that by the time he reached the age of 11, he would make a gun that fired explosions without <laughs> killing the operator. And by golly, he did. Uh. <laughs> it took a couple of dozen prototypes before he got the right combination of gun parts and explosives, right? But once he did, woo-wee! <laughs> I'll never forget the plume of smoke that used to be in my neighbor's homestead. They were jerks, though, so it's okay. Gosh, I've been talking your ear off for some time, haven't I? It's so kind of you to listen for this long. I've taken up too much of your time all day. Please, don't feel like you have to stick around any longer. As a matter of fact, take this for giving this old woman some comfort. Woo! A dollar! Oh, my days. Woo! You're even more attractive than Mr. T. I've got another story for you, but I'd like to tell it to all of your friends at once. An old uh. like me has to say the voice. Oh, you still want to talk with me? How incredibly sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Scarlet. She was robbing my retirement home with a few other oh my God. And I recognized her from her wanted poster. And I said, oh, hey, you fought the Vault Hunter, didn't you? And she bowed all elegantly and said something like, indeed, I did, madam. And said that you were really good at fighting and that you beat her fair and square. She didn't seem to harbor much of a grudge about it. Nice girl. I mean, of course, it's probably not. You're like this hunk of a ball in your I bet you're beating away through this left and right. Look, you're blushing. Oh, I could just eat you up. <laughs> Mr. Torg was so scared of trying to get a date for such a long time. He used to go to parties in high school and just stand in the back without talking to anybody. I am an introvert! I tried to tell him, I said, don't worry about chasing love. Ugh, if you chase your dreams, then love will follow. See, that's the thing people don't get. You watch Echo films and they're just awful. They teach you that the only way to be with someone is to pursue them over and over. That's the they like them. In reality, you know when you like someone almost immediately. You can't really convince somebody to fall in love with you. You just look like a stalker. But if you do think interesting, like making guns that explode or killing mercenaries, then people will see that confidence and skill you have and they'll be attracted to it. But there's always a fine line between that kind of confidence and narcissism, you know? There's nothing worse than somebody who wants to be mm. famous. I remember when Mr. Torg first sold his weapons tech to that board of directors, he was pretty egocentric for a while. Taking pictures of himself and posting them to the Echo Net all the time. Trying to hobnob with every celebrity that used his weapons. He came back home one day with a supermodel under each arm and I said, Mr. Torg, what are you doing? You've lost sight of who you are. It's been weeks since you actually created a new gun, I said. And it was true. He'd been more obsessed with being well known for doing something great than with actually doing something great. It was a dark point in my life. Thankfully, High Five listened to me and got to work on what would eventually become the Kerblaster. You a fan of the Kerblaster? That was always my favorite. That and the Flacker, which I know a lot of people hate. But there's more to combat than just brute efficiency in this old lady's eyes. Style counts for something. And there's nothing quite like filling the air with tiny little explosions. It's like a fireworks show, except the deaths aren't as sad and unexpected. Actually, that reminds me, now that you're here, I wanted to throw some ideas at you for feedback. I'm a playwright in my spare time, and I'm trying to write a story about an up-and-coming tournament fighter who tries to find love in a gladiatorial arena. And I figure you've got a lot of experience, so your feedback could really be valuable. So the play is called Broken Hearts, 
warrior this galaxy has seen, for I am Valkyrie, scourge of the gladiatorial games! Exit Valkyrie as she shakes her head in despair. From stage left, enter Nova, a janitor with a heavy heart and an even heavier conscience. He begins sweeping the body parts into a pen, which is colored green, and remember that because that's a symbolic color of combat, until melancholy overtakes him. He drops his push probe to the floor and falls to his knees before delivering a heart-wrenching soliloquy. No. The blood cannot be washed away. Not before and not now. Even as I attempt to escape the past, which haunts me still. Must I live forever as a fraud, sweeping up the trash of others to hide my shame and avoid my pursuers? Must I forever remain on the periphery of joyful combat? Ever watchful, but never participating. Then, with a clatter of armor, Valkyrie re-enters from stage right. Good morrow, lowly janitor. I heard a noise and thought it worth investigating. Oh, great Valkyrie. Twas nothing but the wails of those souls you released from their bodies tonight. Souls that wail in agony as they fly upward to Valhalla. Fools! What have they to wail about? Their agonies are over, ended at the point of my sword. Mine, however, have only yet begun. For it is lonely at times, and an unchallenged life is a boring one. No doubt, as I am. If only I were able to tell her my true identity, I would give her a fight she would not soon forget. Back to Valkyrie. Yes, ma'am, boredom is the true tragedy. May you one day find challenge in combat. Stupid. Nodon picks up a giant two-armed bastard sword with almost no effort. Valkyrie has a What is this? Excellent. Stay tight. Valkyrie. What strength this janitor possessed? Who is he to pick up a bastard sword with two fingers? What hidden power does he hold? What secrets does he keep? I will endeavor to uncover his past in the hopes that our sword may cross in battle! Excellent. <clears throat> Scene two. Fucking hell. The interior of the governor's house. The table is set with a myriad teas and biscuits. And... Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even ask you for the feedback on the first scene. Did you like it? Oh, wonderful. I'll continue then. Scene two. <laughs> the governess enters from stage left. Governess, I refuse to respond to these absurd accusations. Her husband looks at her quizzically. Governor, and what accusations may those be? Governess, actually, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to get feedback on the play yet. But w what about you? What are you up to? Tell Grandma Flexington all about it. I bet you've had some amazing adventures. Mr. Torg told me about the time you all played bunkers and badasses That's together. Bunker, he said it was one of the most fun and welcoming experiences of his life. Grandpa! You're embarrassing me! Sorry, sweetie, but really, you and the Vault Hunters are his first real pals. It wasn't easy for Mr. Torg to make friends at school when he had facial hair at age eight, pecs at eight and a half, and dead parents by yeah. age nine. People found him intimidating. But I told him that he should be thankful for the fact that he looks different. Anyone who wouldn't be friends with you based on appearance wouldn't be a very good friend anyway. But he really does like hanging out with all of you. Most people these days want Tor to pose for pictures or blow something up by flexing at it. It's not often he gets to sit down and play games with people. Oh, speaking of games, did you play Going Back to the House yet? 
It's a new echo simulation about exploring a log cabin you lived in when you were a kid. There's no violence or anything. You just walk around looking at cereal boxes and remembering people you well, made out with. Let's take the piss out go home. I really like where echo sims have gone in the past few years, don't you? There seem to be a lot more of them with interesting things to do beyond shooting people. And the writing has gotten so tight in size. For instance, did you ever play the Samurai's Marker? The whole game's story was delivered through haiku. Did Zero write it or something? <laughs> no, I just just. I know you're too busy for that. But oh yeah, I was playing at the end of the pointed gun last night on my Echo Sim player, and wow, is that fun. It's about a guy who punches people and smacks himself in the face with doors. <laughs> Easily one of the best punch-related comedy sims ever. But oh, I'm really looking forward to this game called Robot Hunter Assault Squadron, which is this big randomized survival game about throwing bottles at trees and accidentally scaring birds. In the demo version, I scared a bird so hard it died. 10 out of 10 in my book. But what kind of things do you do for fun? You play any sports? You look like you might be into some of the more extreme stuff, like spine hurdling or psycho head volleyball. I knew an athlete a lot like you when I was younger. Her name was Nijo, and she was especially gifted at the giblet toss. Oh, nice. That's an old pastime we had back when I was younger. Idea was you punch a convict, and then see how far you could make their viscera fly across a big field. You got points based on distance and the size of the viscera. She won the final round of the giblet toss championship by getting a left eyeball to cross the 300 meter mark. Hit him! They said she was too sick of the radium, but I think they were just angry that she dethroned the reigning champ, misogynistic Jeff. He all really liked him for some reason. Hey, what's your favorite food? My burgers, personally. People look at you like you're a pleb or something when you say you like burgers, but just think of all the things you can do with them. You can change out the patty, play around with the toppings, change what sides you have. You ever have a burger with veggies? Just die! I all but forgot about fries for about a year after I discovered the veggie chip combo. <laughs> and I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but those veggie patties oh. that make more world are amazing! Better than real meat if you cook it right. Mr. Toy tried to be vegetarian once after he saw a fluff bear get run over by a truck. How long you left again? Twelve seconds. Barely even finished the word vegetarian before he lunged at a statue I was holding in my left hand. He nearly lost his finger. Granted, he's all in the statue. Skag bacon. Oh, it always felt like skag tasting like old time. But to each his own. Taste is a funny thing. People say your taste buds get more refined as time goes on, but they actually get worse and worse. So when Mr. Torg used to refuse vegetables as a kid, it's because he was actually tasting how awful they were. When we old folks eat vegetables, we're only okay with it because we can't taste all the gross vitamins and stuff. Granted, vitamins are what have kept me going for as long as I can go. You get enough B12 in your system to keep the when your brain drains. That reminds me, I need to get my pills ready for the rest of the week. I have one of those little nuts and eaters split into different sections each day. It's really helpful. And the size is dropped enough that I can use it for the hard ones if I need to. Here's the anarchist. Probably into the bizarre. I'm gonna find some candy now.
I'm a coming, boys. Guys, find the drop. Oh, fuck, you gotta go outside. <laughs> go, team, man, go. Second thing. I seriously don't know where the second guy is. Wow. Oh, the fuck?
I found him. He's fucking floating in the air over there, Tass. Not taking I'm down. feeling awesomer. Why wasn't that the guy? Where the, where the fuck is the other guy? Hey JK, how's it going? Taz, do we know where the other guy is? Also, I can't hear you anymore. Okay, that's weird. My thing was on mute. I wonder how fucking long that was on mute for. What the fuck? What? I did, I only saw one dummy spawn. Yeah, I did as well. I see the other the pad though, like um up here, but I don't know how to get up there, or like if you even need to get up there. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe. Oh, board lads. Why you? Why you do this? But this is raid difficulty, don't forget. Chicken bacon says glitched. I mean, we can save and quit out and then come back in again. Okay. That's fine, it's only free. I'm happy I ain't got work tomorrow. Oh, I've got to go pay my rent and that tomorrow. So poor for the rest Ooh, of the week. Alright, load it back up, we'll smash it and then uh 
en kul af, nej. Yeah. Let me know when you're, you're in there. Sorry, I just had to fucking completely back. Yeah, yeah. It just took forever. <sighs> Hopefully it's like saved at that first fucking guy dying. So it should be, it should be. Oh, we failed! Oh, don't piss me off. You gotta listen to all of that again? No, no, I'm done. I'm fucking done. Wait, check, check. Because if, if it's just go get the candy, then we could probably do that. If she starts fucking waffling. <laughs> go check. You have some time to talk to an old grandmother. Oh, I just thought of something else I wanted to tell you. It's a second fucking story. Nope. No. 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 I'm not mentally prepared for that tonight. Nope. 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 Done. Fucking done. Fucking done. <laughs>